morning, and welcome to Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center. Bishop Timothy Byron McGee and Pastor Bernadine Bell McGee are honored to have you worship with them at 16012 Cottage Grove in South Holland, Illinois. Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center is where we believe Jesus is Lord, building his kingdom is our purpose, and every guest or member is our priority. We are Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center, where our motto is inspiring ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Wherever you are online, join, like, follow, and share Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center. We can be found on Facebook and YouTube. Now, let's enter into our worship.
from losing my mind. Thank you for keeping me, Jesus. In unfortunate situations, thank you for keeping me, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a keeper. Should have gave up a long time ago, but he's a keeper. Should have threw in the towel a long time ago, but he keeps on keeping me. I said he keeps on keeping me. Keeping my family keeps on keeping me. Keep on making ways out of nowhere. Keeps on keeping me. Keeping my emotions keep on keeping me. Keeping my thinking keeps on keeping me. Keeping my heart keeps on keeping me. Thank you for keeping me, Jesus. Thank you for keeping me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He keeps on keeping me. I said he keeps on keeping me. When my heart is overwhelmed, he keeps on keeping me. When I feel like I'm stuck in life, he keeps on keeping me. Even when I make a bad decision, he keeps on keeping me. He keeps on keeping me. He keeps on keeping me. Even though I'm undeserving, he keeps on keeping me. That's why I love him. And that's why I bless him. God, we bless your name today. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. We hope that you were blessed by today's worship. Now, let's prepare our hearts and our minds to receive a fresh word from the Lord from our very own phenomenal teacher and spiritual leader of Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center, Bishop Timothy Byron McGee. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tag and aim and a friend and let them know Free Spirit is on the air. We just kept in and shouting. That's why I'm a little out of breath. Amen. But God's been good to me. So I had to give him glory. I had to give him honor. I had to give him praise. Amen. Listen, be seated. We've been talking about faith is more powerful than what? Say it out loud, read the whole thing, read. Faith is more powerful than fear. Faith is more powerful than fear. God gave us a word last year. We were talking about the Shunammite woman. About this time next year, the prophet prophesied and spoke into her life. And we've been decreeing and declaring that we are fearless. Did y'all hear what I'm, anybody got their mirror? Anybody got their mirror? I ain't buying y'all mirrors no more because y'all don't bring them back. I mean, I bought 50, 50 something mirrors, and there's like about 10 mirrors in this whole church. But those of you that got your mirror, get your mirror, get your phone, look at your phone. You gotta speak to yourself. See, in this particular season, we're not just speaking over our lives, we're speaking into our lives. Amen. Somebody say, I am fearless, afraid of nothing and no one. I am victorious. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. I live in peace. I live in power. I live in authority. Therefore, I render myself fearless in Jesus' name. Now, I don't know what y'all been doing, but I've been speaking to myself ever since this conference started. Some of y'all think it's weird. But when you're mad at folks, you're looking at me and say, I'm going to get them. Oh, oh I'm going to get them. Yes, I just let me finish getting my clothes on. I'm going to get them. You speak to yourself all the time. 
So since we speak to ourselves, why don't we speak into the mirror? And so people of God, uh, 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 somebody sent me this quote and I like to share my faith quote. And the first one goes like this. It says, faith is acting like something that is so, even when it's not so, in order that it might be so, simply because God says so. I believe my wife and them have something they say on their line. And it is so, and so it is. Somebody say, and it is so, and so it is. And so people of God, last time, we were talking about Peter. And we were talking about Peter uh, stepping out on the water and in the middle. Somebody say, in the middle. In the middle of the miraculous, he got scared. And when he began to get scared, he started looking at the wind and the waves and the sea and started looking at the type of storm he was in. And while he was scared, he began to sink. And so, people of God, we've been trying to get you to eradicate fear out of your life. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Eradicate fear out of your life. And so people have got, uh, 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 Jesus asked him, why are you afraid? And I, 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 I began to, to study more about Peter. And a little bit later, now I know why Jesus was constantly on Peter about his faith. <clears throat> Uh, and so, people of God, what I'm trying to get you to do, I'm trying to get you to this point in your life that you fear nothing and no thing. Yeah. That when God do it, don't be, don't be scared because he did it. Yeah. When he fixed it for you, don't, don't, don't be scared because he fixed it for when he made a way. Don't be scared when he do it. And so, people of God, don't be afraid to speak it. Some of us are afraid to speak certain things because we're not sure if God's going to do it. Come on, somebody. We, we're not sure if, if God is going to do it, so we don't want to put it out into the, 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 uh, the wave because if he don't do it, then I didn't say nothing. Now I won't be embarrassed. Let me tell y'all something. You got to get over yourself. You ain't all that to be embarrassed. Amen. If God wanted to embarrass you, all you got to do is, is, is uh, uh, pull up the, uh, the curtain and let folks see who you really are. You're so worried about being embarrassed and you're worried about what people are going to say about y'all. And see, people have got y'all. Y'all have to understand at a certain point in life, it don't matter what nobody say but God. Did y'all hear what I say? It, it don't matter what nobody say but God. And so, therefore, Peter said, Jesus, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter began to walk on the water. But then, in the middle of his miracle, see, y'all got to be careful. I told you all uh, a few Sundays ago, if God bless you with a house, he can bless you enough to pay the taxes on the house. Y'all ain't listening to what I'm saying now. If he bless you with the house, he can bless you, pay the water bill, the light bill, the gas bill, the lawn care bill, the snow remover bill. He can, get, he can prepare you enough. He can provide enough to meet every need that you have. God is not a half blessing God. He don't bless you with a car and leave you with no gas. And so, people of God, you got to get to this place that you don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to act on it. Don't be afraid to confront it. You know why? Because, look at this. Fearlessness is the strength of faithfulness. Did y'all get that? Fearlessness is the strength of faithfulness, because wherever there is fearlessness, that means there is no fear there. And that means faith can just rise. And you become and you do whatever God has 
told you to do. And so people laughed time we talk about uh, 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 Peter was afraid. But this time we're going to talk about Peter being tired. You know, sometimes we just get tired of waiting on the Lord. Sometimes we just get tired of, you know, they that wait on the Lord. Shall we you get tired of that stuff? You, you just get tired of waiting. You just get tired of people saying, be encouraged. And, you know, hold on and hang on in there. God's got you. you know. I'm sick of everybody got me, but ain't nothing manifesting. Anybody in here besides me, sometimes you just get tired. Don't mean that you don't love the Lord. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. It don't mean that you're turning your back on God. It don't mean that you're backsliding. Because you're human, sometimes you just get tired. You get, you get tired of having to believe God for your crazy kids. Y'all ain't saying that. You get tired of believing God for your stubborn spouse. You get tired of believing God for your boss that you don't like and they don't like you. You just get tired. But let's get into the story on today. Uh, go to Luke, the fifth chapter. Luke, the fifth chapter, verses one through nine. <clears throat> I'm going to read a little bit, and I'm not going to be long on today. And it came to pass that after people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. The fishermen were gone out of them and they were washing their nets. And he entered uh, into one of the ships, uh, which was Simon's ship, and he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And Jesus sat and he taught the people out of the ship. Verse 4, and now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draught. Verse 5, and Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken in nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down my net. Master, I've been waiting all year, and ain't nothing happened for me yet. But nevertheless, I'm going to let down my net. Master, I've been trusting you. I've been speaking your word, standing on your word. Ever since last year, October 17th, but nevertheless, I'm going to let down down my neck, verse 6. And when they had done this, uh, uh, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, uh, and their neck break, uh, and they beckoned unto their partners, uh, which were in the other ship, uh, that they should come and help them. And they came uh, and filled the both, both of the ship, so that the, uh, there they began to sink, verse when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at his feet and said, uh, uh, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all that were with and all that were with him at the drought of fishes which they had taken in. So here in our story, uh, Jesus is teaching uh, from the ship. But if you notice, he said, I want you to push back a little further than normal. I want you to push back a little further than normal. And he was teaching from the ship. First of all, people, that was a miracle in itself. Uh, how can he push back into the lake and teach the people on the land? and they could actually hear what he was saying. So he said, push back a little bit further so I could teach the people. Uh, and so as he pushed back uh, and began to teach, he told Simon them what to do. Uh, can I just tell y'all something? Uh, when Jesus tells you to do something, uh, don't 
give him no flat back. Don't give him no excuses. Just do what he said. And so he had told them, uh, I want you all to launch out into the deep. Uh, Peter began to tell Jesus because Peter was a fisherman by trade. This was his occupation. He began to tell Jesus, Jesus, we've been out there fishing all night, uh, waiting on fish to come. Uh, waiting on something to come uh, and we have caught nothing uh, Jesus I know my trade uh, because I'm a fisherman by trade uh, and I know if I ain't caught nothing after a certain amount of time y'all catch this uh, I ain't gonna catch nothing uh, and see some of y'all feel like uh, it ain't happened what I wanted to happen ain't happened uh, by a certain amount of time uh, that don't mean that it ain't gonna happen happen uh, because people of God uh, when I begin to study this story uh, now I see uh, why Jesus uh, told him to back up the boat uh, further into the sea because uh, I believe in my heart uh, not only uh, was he teaching uh, to the people uh, on the land uh, he was teaching uh, to the fish uh, the water and so when they began to back up the anointing of God on Jesus was on top of the water and under the water this is just me I believe that when he Jesus was teaching he was telling the fish to come from the north to come from the south to come from the east and to come from the west he told them to go back further because you don't find that many fish in shallow water look at somebody and say you gotta go deep to find what you want y'all still around shallow water cause you worry about you can't swim ah but Jesus with that Peter's hand when he was taken in the water and he pulled him out I declare and I decree that God is doing something awesome in your life while you're on the land he's going before you to speak in your situation you got before you uh, to speak in your house, uh, to speak in your children, uh, to speak in your family. Uh, I don't just want money, uh, I want deep money. Uh, I don't just want healing, uh, I need a deep tissue healing. Uh, I don't just want a miracle, uh, I need a strong miracle. Uh, I just believe uh, that while you're waiting, uh, God uh, is doing something miraculous. Uh, God is doing something powerful. God is making a way out of nowhere. God is doing something in the underworld. Just like he's doing in the underworld. Look at somebody. Tell them go to the deep and don't stop waiting. Go to the deep. See, one attribute in the Bible that we don't like is patience. Oh, God. Patience. Patience. Don't have a time limit. Y'all understand. Patience, look at me. Patience don't know how to quit when you wanted to quit. Patience don't know how to come when you wanted to come. Uh, patience don't abide by a clock. Uh, patience don't abide by an alarm. Uh, and so therefore, patience uh, just leave you waiting. But the Bible says, first in James 1 and 3, knowing this, somebody say knowing this, 
the trying of your faith work is what? Patience, patience. Somebody say patience, patience. I, I came to encourage somebody today. Anybody still waiting? Anybody still waiting? Still waiting? Look at me. Look at me. Anybody still waiting? I, I need to know. Anybody still waiting? And, and patience, the anticipation is making me wait. But I got some good news for you. I got some good news for you. When I was praying this weekend, when I was before the Lord and meditating, God dropped something in my spirit that I never heard before. Everybody just stand on your feet for a minute because we need to celebrate this right now. God dropped something in my spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't get tired of waiting. Come on. Don't get tired of holding on. Don't get tired of pressing. Uh, don't get tired of pushing. You know why? Because your patience is getting ready to pay off. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said your patience is getting ready to pay off. But you keep on pushing. You keep on striving. Because your patience is getting ready to pay off. Five, three people tell them it's going to pay off. Tell them it's going to pay off. Tell it's going to pay off. Your patience. God ain't forgot you. God ain't forgot you. Your patience is getting ready to pay off. Tell somebody it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. It's going to. You wait on your healing. Your patience is getting ready to pay off. Patience. Did you hear what I say? Hey, your patience is getting ready to pay off. It's gonna pay off. It's gonna pay off. Just touch somebody, tell them it's gonna pay off. I feel like y'all need to encourage somebody, tell them it's gonna pay off. Walk around the room. Come on, walk around the room. Tell them it's gonna pay off. Tell them it's gonna pay off. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. Mother, it's gonna pay off. Brother, it's gonna pay off. Sister, it's gonna pay off. Don't stop trusting. Don't stop waiting. The drag of your faith, it works patience. And I declare unto you that your patience is getting ready. Your patience is getting ready to pay off somebody's shot. Woo! It's getting ready. It's getting ready. Y'all are hearing what I'm saying? Patience. It's getting ready to pay off. God's going to pay you worth more than you've been waiting for. Y'all didn't hear what I say. I didn't forget you. Maybe your testimony wasn't on the list that I read, but your patience. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Your patience is getting ready. Did y'all write that down? Did y'all write that down? Y'all need that for this week. Somebody say, my patience is getting ready to pay off. Oh! Ha, 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 my patience. Let's get ready. What am I telling you? You're not waiting in vain. You're not trusting in vain. 
pain. You are not just on this in pain. Your patience is getting ready. To pay off. So, so Peter, Peter them, they said, Master, we've been fishing all night long. We've been fishing all night long. We've been holding on for a long time. And because I'm a fisherman by trade, I know when the fish don't come by a certain time, they ain't coming. I need y'all to stay in this story with me. I know if it ain't here by a certain time, y'all, y'all, y'all come on now. You, you know how, how you know a person and if they say they gonna meet you at the restaurant and, you know, and they don't show up which is so unlike them, you know that if they don't come by a certain time, they not coming and something must be wrong. So this is what Peter was saying. He said, Master, we've been out fishing all night long. And we ain't caught nothing. Look at me. And Peter just knew it was over because the Bible said they was washing their net. They only wash their net when they're done. Y'all missed this. Y'all missed this. Y'all missed it. I, I, I came to tell y'all, some of y'all believe in, been believing God for stuff, and it looked like it's just getting worse and worse and worse. That ain't no word, but y'all know I make up my own word. It just gets worse. And you say I'm done. But God said, go back out there again. He said, go back out there again. But this time, somebody say, but this time. Go further. But this time. Go broader, but this time go deeper, but this time go longer, but this time go bigger. So I just believe that when Jesus was teaching on the water, catch this, he was also commanding under the water. Y'all not saying nothing. When Jesus, he's a miracle worker. And, and, and both of these situations deal with water. He was walking on the water. He was teaching on the water. And this time, I just believe in my spirit, he was commanding underwater. Look at me. Because he knew where the fish were going to be. That's why he said this time, somebody say this time. Go further. Go further. Go a little longer than you normally have. Y'all ain't saying that with me. This time, go deeper than you normally do. This time, I want you to go longer. Uh, 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 we're all following uh, Pastor Bernadine on this 21-day consecration. And most of y'all say I ain't going because I'll never make it nohow. But see, Bible said this time. Go deeper. You can make any fast you get in the mirror and tell your flesh you're going to do. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Keep your mirror with you all day long. While you're on the fast, she's going to pray a little bit later on. She's going to pray a little bit later on that God give us squint to go on the fast. But oh, we keep your mirror with you. You ain't eating. Keep your mirror with you. You're fasting today. Come on, come on. I find you McDonald's demon in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, just keep your mirror with you. I ain't getting no hell's chicken today. Keep your mirror with you. I ain't getting no chick for late this morning. Keep your mirror with you and talk to yourself. You gonna make this fast, cause this time you gonna launch out into the deep because your patient is getting ready to pay off. Somebody get your parents and say, this time, I'm going to do it. This time, I'm going to do it. 
And so, Jesus, and the reason I could think like this, even though it's not in the Bible, because we all have to agree he's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. So, so, so here, he tells them in verse 6, he said, This is Peter, and when he had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes that their net break. Verse 7, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ships. Somebody say the other ships. That they should come and help them. And they came and they filled both ships. Y'all not flowing with me. And they filled both ships so that they began to sing. Look at me. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you this time to go further, to go deeper. Your, 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 your patience is getting ready to pay off. But this time, you're not just going to catch a lot of fish. When, when, when I was studying about this and when I was reading about this, I heard one word uh, uh, combined uh, 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 that consists of two words. Uh, and when I heard this, uh, Elder Phyllis, uh, I heard the Lord say uh, that he is preparing uh, boatloads. Y'all miss what I'm saying? He's preparing boatloads. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, I'm not talking about what you normally get. Uh, I'm not talking about what you normally carry. Uh, I'm not talking about what you normally bring in. Uh, somebody shout boatloads. Uh, God is getting ready uh, to give you a boatload. And then, uh, where it's going to sink uh, your blessing. Uh, it's going to pay off so well. Uh, it's going to pay off so well uh, that you're going to sink. Uh, you're going to need help carrying your blessing. Uh, you're going to need help with the magnitude. Somebody uh, shout boatloads. Uh, boatloads of fish. Uh, Boatloads of blessings, uh, boatloads of finances, uh, boatloads of healing, uh, boatloads of miracles. Uh, not bad as you have boatloads. I never heard it like that. He said boatloads. Woo! And you shall have whatsoever you say. And what do you say? Y'all ain't saying that. I say, you shall have whatsoever you say. What do you say? Pound clothes. What is the definition of pound clothes? What your eyes ain't seen. Uh, what your ears ain't heard. Uh, he that hath an entered into the hearts of men. Uh, the good things uh, that God has prepared uh, for his people. I came to tell you uh, that God uh, has prepared uh, boatloads. Give him a praise. Uh, give him a praise. Uh, give him a praise. Boatloads. 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 Sound like a little country word. We don't use that in the Midwest. But God spoke it into my spirit. He said, Boatload. I don't want y'all to be discouraged. Boatload. You gotta go deeper. You gotta go further. You gotta go broader. You gotta stay longer. But Boatload. Your patience is getting ready to pay off with boatloads. So you can include that on your consecration. We're consecrating to 
get back to the right place with God. Everybody stand on your feet, I'm done. We're consecrating to get into a new place with God. God gonna do boatloads of miracles in this house, in this house. Hold on, burner. What is Sarah looking for? A new heart or a new kidney? What is Sarah looking for? Talk to me. She's looking for a new heart. Sarah, your patience is getting ready. Yeah, come on, can y'all praise God with her? Your patience is getting ready to pay off. Boat low. Somebody look at Sarah and shout, boat low. And while y'all speaking, as Sarah, Felicia, your back and your knees are going to be eternally healed. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Somebody look at Felicia and shout, Bout low. Ah, collect. Chronic pain is getting ready to dissipate from your life. Y'all ain't hear. It's getting hard. It's getting ready to dissipate from your life. Don't even say the word chronic anymore. Say remarkable. Because God is getting ready to give you boatloads of healing. You shall know what it is to have a day without pain, to have a day without hurt, to have a day without sorrow. Somebody shout, Pablo. Pablo, lift your hand. Say, God, I thank you. I thank you that my patience is getting ready to pay off well. I say my patience is getting ready to pay off well. I say my patience is getting ready to pay me well. And I pray that for what you just said. You and our streaming audience, your patience is getting ready to pay you well. Launch out into the deep. Go a little bit deeper. Go a little bit further. Go a little bit broader. Go a little bit bigger. Because God is getting ready to bless you with boatloads in your life. Somebody just say boatload. I hear it, I hear it in my spirit. I tell you about kind of love, oh, I tell you about. I tell you about, so tell you about kind of love, oh, My patience is getting ready to pay me boatload. My patience is getting ready to pay me boatload. My patience is getting ready to pay me Just about done. My patience is getting ready to pay me boatload. And why? This is what I need you to know. Your faith is more powerful than fear. Look at somebody and point your finger in their faith and say, Your faith is more powerful than fear. Look at somebody here and say, your faith is more powerful than fear. When God tell you to do something that you're tired of doing, look at somebody say, do it anyway. 
when it tells you to go forgive somebody that you ain't even done wrong to. Somebody say, do it anyway. See, people, we're not just blessed when we get cars and houses and uh, 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 debt cancellation. You are blessed uh, with boatloads and your patience and pain off when you can go to somebody, look them in the eye, and say, I'm sorry for everything I did to you, y'all ain't saying. Don't just say I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for how I acted. I'm sorry for treating you wrong. I'm sorry for divulging your business. An apology is more than just two words. It's two words with a definition behind it. I'm sorry, and you have to say, I'm sorry, boy. See, that's the remarkable. When you can treat somebody right, they have no intentions of treating you right. That's remarkable. When you won't loan them what they ask for, but you just give them what they, you oh, y'all ain't saying, huh? That's remarkable. Remarkable. As a people of God, I'm looking on this consecration, and we're gonna end early because our first lady is gonna come and give instruction that she's gonna pray for all of us that's going. Amen. It's, it's a whosoever will. If you don't want to go, that's fine. But this time, I'm going deep. I'm gonna launch out into the deep on this consecration. Come on, somebody. See, y'all don't pray the truth about yourself. When my wife first mentioned to me, she just fast, we were having a conversation in the kitchen, and we were talking and said, she said, Tim, something only, that's what the Bible says, only come by fasting and praying. And after we had that conversation, I'd be walking through the house at night, said, God, you know I'm a this guy. I ain't talking about her. I said, God, you know I'm a this kind. And this kind needs your help. This kind need deliverance. Come on, somebody. So this time, this time, this kind is gonna go deeper. And that's why I have to render myself Fearless, everybody stand and I'm gonna pray. Father, I thank you, lift your hands. I thank you right now for your word today. God, as you've commissioned Peter, God, it's time for us to launch out into the deep. God, you sent your word and you said that our patience is getting ready to pay off. Lord Jesus, but we thank you right now that God, we let this word permeate our hearts. And Father, when we go out this time, we believe you're going to get boatloads. We believe you're going to get boatloads of answers, boatloads of blessings, boatloads of healing, boatloads of miracles, boatloads of signs and wonders, boatloads. And not only for us in the audience, for those in our streaming audience, we thank you right now. Those of you that want to join us, we're starting a 21-day consecration tomorrow. And just join us. Amen. And I guarantee you, this time, somebody shout this time. God's going to do something in our life that he's never done before. Now, Father, I thank you right now for all those listening. I thank you right now in advance for all those that are participating. And I believe you. God, I thank you for blessing our tiredness. Because of our obedience, our patience is going to pay off. And we thank you right now for what you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, somebody say thank God. Amen. Give the Lord a hand praise.
You may be seated. Well, thank you for those that have uh, stayed to hear the word of the Lord on today. Listen, we want to invite you, amen, to, to, to come share with us. We, in fact, you know what? I don't think I've ever invited you to come to our service. Our building is open, amen. We're at 16012 Cottage Grove Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center every Sunday morning at 845. Won't you come and be our guest, amen, on next Sunday or any Sunday you choose, amen. Again, Free Spirit Ministerial Worship Center, 16012 South Cottage Grove, amen. But listen, we want to give you the opportunity to sow and to give, amen. They will show you the method and the way that you can give to us, whether it's give the podcast app, whether it's there or you even want to mail it in. I want to God to bless you for your giving. We appreciate everything that you do, everything that you've done, and we appreciate your giving. Amen. And so listen, thank you in advance. I hope to see you next Sunday. Amen. And don't be surprised if before I see you again, you receive a boatload of blessing. Amen. Well, like we say every time, uh, don't worry about anything, but trust God for everything, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.